Hallelujah. How's everybody today? Are you blessed and highly flavored, anointed, appointed, and ready to go? Amen. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. Remember, if you're miserable, stay home. Go in your closet, get filled, delivered, healed, then come and get prayed for. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. There's nothing worse than a miserable Christian. In fact, there shouldn't be. Heck, we've been rescued, man. Amen? We've been saved. Been anointed, appointed, ready to go. We've got to be ready in season and out because it's time to kick butt on the devil. It's amazing. Let me share something with you, very important. I posted something this morning on Facebook. It was very simple. <laughs> There's nothing offensive. It's cool. <laughs> I didn't tell, say anything about any Democrat getting in heaven that I couldn't. But uh, anyways, the purpose of the uh, post was that we are entering a time and realm right now. We are in a place right now where the unseen is going to start to become seen. 2020 is going to be not only a year of exchange of things, but it's going to be we are going to see things that mankind has never seen before. I'm telling you, things are going to be released. God is going to allow a release of many mysteries and things that have been going on behind the scenes. You know, spiritual warfare is associated with Warfare in the spirit. But there's a place that is also recognized in the spirit. It's called heavenlies. And there is a war going on in the heavenlies. Not only unseen, but there is a seen war going on in the heavenlies, but most of humanity doesn't see it. Because it's been hidden from us. That's why you now are seeing an organization and an addition to our military called Space Force. Because what God is doing now is bringing what's been unseen, causing them to come in to the scene. We are in a time and season right now where spiritual warfare is essential as a believer. We're to attack the heavenlies multiple ways. Bind, blind, mute, mute and deaf these demonic forces. Call destructive fire down in all these places. They've been hiding out. Yes, there are hybrids. There's half-breeds. There's um, shape-shifters. There's all kinds of demonic forces. There's battles between them also. We're in the middle. We were born in a war. Amen? But we were born at such a time as this, that we are a generation of not only the Lord's return, but the exposure of everything. I mean, it is going to be intense. And I don't mean intense, tense. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's going to be crazy, man. You're going to have to hold on to what God has said because it's going to be a time of great deception also. Great deception. So you and I have... A calling that we must fulfill. Amen? But there's something we are called to, and that's to serve. Amen? We're called to serve. We're not to call to serve self. We're called to serve Him. And there is a calling to serve. And, and that's when many people are missing it. People think that, <clears throat> well, I got saved now. Now I can, it's time to build my house. Now it's time to build a family. Now it's time to do this. Now it's time to do that. It's not the time. God builds all that. Your purpose, amen, your call is to be what? You're the call to what? Battle. Amen. Your purpose is to destroy Satan's kingdom, and your destiny is to infiltrate the world system and rescue those who have been taken captive. That's why we were sent into this world. Amen. We didn't come here to have a vacation. We didn't come to feed off of the things of deception and lies. God sent us in here to rescue someone. 
and to live a life of service unto the king, not unto self. That's why you and I are born again. We're not born from this realm. We're not born out of the flesh. We are born out of the spirit, the eternal realm. We're connected to the future. That's why we should be living from the future to the present, not from the past to the present. Those who live from the past to the present are doomed. They can't go forward. They're always tripping over themselves. Amen? Would you turn to Ephesians 4, please? Everyone say, called to serve. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Welcome to Sunday morning life. You never would know what's going to happen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 4. You know, the one thing about worshiping, the Father says, I look for those who worship me in truth and spirit. And you go after him. He goes after you. Whew. Hallelujah. Verse 1, let's speak it together. I, therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy. Say, walk what? Worthy of the calling with which you were called. So there must be a walk of worthiness. In other words, see, in the process of your call, the word says many are called, but few are what? Chosen. So there's a process of your call until you are chosen. Does everybody understand that? To be chosen is a place of position. That position is earned. Why? Because there's testing. There's training. There's testing. There's training. There's dying. There's removal of self. Removal of old. There's training in the tongue. There's training in the thoughts. There's discernment. There's avoiding demonic forces. There's attack of forces. You're learning. You're learning. You're learning. It doesn't stop. Then God says, okay, it's time. Then he says, I chose you. Yes, he rescued us. Now, there's an area where we say, well, he chose me. Uh, he first chose me. No, he first loved you. Amen. But we got a place, a position to where we finally cried out for mercy. Lord, choose me. Have mercy on me. And he says, all right, I consider you. When he considers you, he trains you. As you begin to begin train, that's your call. That's your call. So we are called to serve, to serve, but in this call, there's a process until we are chosen for a purpose of destiny. Does everybody get that? <clears throat> All right, go to verse 2. Let's start at verse 1 again. I, therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all what? Lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. What's grace? God's plan of what? Escape. I'm going to emphasize this. this. Grace is not God's unmerited favor. It's grace, God's unmerited love. You earn his favor. Amen? That's why people think that uh, just because they become a Christian, they go out and do whatever they want to do and make it home. No way. The word believe means to what? Follow. That's a lot of deception. In, ver in verse 8, therefore he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. Now this, he ascended, what does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth, which is what? We call Hades or hell. He who descended is also the one who ascended 
far above all the heavens that he might fill all things. That word might fill all things is mean you must cooperate with what he's doing to fulfill everything. And he himself gave some to be what? Apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the what? Equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edification, for the edifying of the what? The body of Christ. In other words, this is your calling. See, you're in a process of calling. Until we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God to a what? Perfect man. Is a perfect man chosen? Yeah. To the measure of the statue of the fullness of Christ. In other words, the fullness of the anointing so that you might know who you are, but you won't know who you are until you know who he is. Verse 14, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. Very powerful. From whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. You were called for your calling. Does everybody get it? You are called. In other words, that means invited to go through training, to be prepared. You are called for your calling. So we, you and I must fulfill our calling. We must be faithful. We must be consistent. Consistent. We must be humble and submissive. That's what he called worthy of your calling. So while you're going through this process of calling, what's your attitude like? Does everybody get it? Are you faithful? Are you consistent? Are you grumbling and complaining? Are you still woes and measies? Are you submissive? Are you submissive to the ways of training? Listen, God's got a different way of training than what you and I normally know. How many all trials and tribulations are part of training? People go, I can't believe you let this happen to me. No, you let it happen to you. The word says something very important. It says, I went astray. That's how I got afflicted. Amen? See, anything that comes on you, God just is in send. You know, I think I'll just, you know, train them here today. No, we bring it on ourselves. But he uses it and turns it to the good so that we can be trained up. Amen? So he's looking for something very important in training, consistency. Consistent, consistent, consistent is a key. Consistency. Now, it doesn't mean be consistent to rebellion. Doesn't mean consistent to gossip. It means consistency to his ways. Amen. Matthew 22. <laughs> Together. Matthew 22, verse 1. And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by the parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son and sent out his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding. And they were not willing to come. In other words, he invited them to the wedding. Call also is a representation of invitation. Again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen and fatted cattle are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the wedding. But they made what? They made light of it and went their ways. And one to his own farm, another to his own business. And the rest seized his servants, treated them spitefully and what killed them hmm. but when the king heard about it he was furious and he sent out his armies destroyed those murderers and burned up their city then he said to his servants 
The wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. Therefore, go into the highways, and many of you find, invite to the wedding. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both good and bad. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have on a wedding garment. And he said to him, friend, isn't that what he said to Judas, friend? He said, friend, how did you come into here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. And the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot. Take him away and cast him into outer darkness. And there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. See, the final quest is the gathering of the marriage. That's the final quest. We will be gathered with the Lord to the marriage. Amen? It will be the marriage supper of the bride of Christ. Our king, of course, is Jesus. It's the bridegroom, and we as the body are the bride. Jesus, they, many of these individuals made light of the calling. They made light of the invitation. Building their own life and their own business. Building their ways. They were a servant to self. And not to the Lord. Then the Lord sent out soldiers. So you go from servant to soldier. Amen? So in this, there's a process in the calling. Everyone must fulfill priesthood. Amen? A priest is one who ministers to the Lord. Because you got no right ministering to nobody else if you can't minister to him. And that ministering to the Lord is vital because priesthood is the place of anointing. And there's that process. It's all a part of the calling. Your outer court, holy place, and most holy place. It's all, everything revolves around the tabernacle. Is everybody okay? Now the garments that he had on, <laughs> because the army of the soldiers are garments of chosen. You don't become an, uh, a, a soldier in the kingdom unless you have been what? Chosen. And this man came in not with chosen garments. Does everybody understand? The process of training in the transition of the heart and mind into the likeness of Christ. It's a process. It's constant. There will be many imposters that will not get, the, and they're not going to get away with it. <laughs> They're not going to get away with their wickedness. Many still are self-serving, seeking emotional fulfillments on the economic foundations. Not willing to submit to the regeneration of the assembling, supporting their own, and not willing to accept the invitation of the call of God. Again, the call of God is a call. It's an invitation. And that call... Is consistent until when? Chosen. Now, in this, you may be chosen for something. Then God brings you to another level, and he wants you to be trained up so you go back into another call while you're maintaining a chosen position. Because you've been chosen doesn't mean you're, you have access to all positions. So, because you've been chosen at a position is because you've been trained up and accepted in that. You've qualified for that. Amen? Now he puts you back in calling. Training. Paul said something very important because Paul went through it all. He said, I became many things that many could be saved. Why? He was willing to go. In fact, he didn't even start ministry for 14 years. He was willing to go through the training. Now, we ain't got 14 years left, so things are going to move quick. So you got to die quick. <laughs> Hallelujah. Again, I want to say that many are still self-serving, seeking emotional fulfillments on the economic foundations. Not on the foundation of Christ. Not willing to submit to the regeneration of assembling, 
and supporting their own self, their own business, their own things, their own call, not the calling of the Lord. There's a difference. You and I are called to serve God Almighty, not us. 1 Corinthians 3. Hallelujah. Or three. Called to serve. In verse 9. See, so many times, and this is where the deception is because many are trying to build a business to serve God. But they haven't served God themselves. That's why it won't work. They live a life of emotion, not a life of denial of self. In verse 9, let's speak it. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's building. According to the grace of God which was given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take what? Heed how he builds on it. In other words, you must discern how you're building. In other words, in this building, what you've got to discern is what you're cooperating with. Who you're cooperating with. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Christ Jesus. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with what? Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw. Each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it. Because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work has, has, which has been built endures, he will receive a reward. So let me ask you something. As God is building your foundation which is actually part of your training and calling. Amen? And you choose to agree with something else and put it into your foundation. What's going to happen afterwards? It's going to collapse. It won't last. You cannot build a third floor home on a first floor on one floor foundation. Amen? So in this, God begins to build our foundation and he doesn't want us to build on the things of the world. He wants us to build on the things of the kingdom. Again, if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss. But he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the, the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Wow. So we're to take heed in how we allow the foundation to be built and maintained. Many start with a heart to serve the king and his kingdom, but they grow weary by the continuous pounding of deceptive influence. Then they begin to exchange the righteous ways of building to the selfish ways of building. And the next thing you know, they're back where they started from. But again, some I never condemn anyone for starting over again. Praise God. Better to start over and end up in hell. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. But man, let's get it right the first time. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. Pride's a killer, isn't it? First Corinthians chapter one, verse twenty six. Oh, hallelujah. Let's speak it together, please. Is everybody there? For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. That's invited. 
But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us what? Wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. That it is written, he who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Powerful. Powerful. So we see here that there's no works of emotional flesh. <laughs> it's no works of emotional flesh shall receive glory. Amen. But we have been called, invited into the wisdom, righteousness, and sanctification of his redemptive plan to serve his purpose, not ours. Serve whose purpose? His, not ours. Amen? Second Timothy 1. Called to serve. You know, one of the things that begins to happen, you know, when there truly is a heart change, when you come into the kingdom, the first thing that's on your heart is, I want to serve. I want to serve. I want to do something for him because what he just did for me. Amen? And God has to rein us in. Because when we first start out, sometimes we're out there running over people. There's people that still have tire marks on them, you know, that need healing. Many people run from the church because of maniacs like us sometimes. <laughs> Yo, you need Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to slap the hell out of you and make room for heaven. No, don't work that way. Overzealous can hurt people. Amen? We want to be overzealous for his presence. And that's between you and him. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, is everybody there? Oh, glory. In verse 1, uh, yeah, 1 verse 8, I'm sorry. Let's speak it. Therefore, do not be what? Do not be what? Ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a what? A holy calling. That's called righteous calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. So God already had something planned for you. He's just been waiting for you to be, to cooperate. That's all. Many people didn't open the envelope of the invitation. They put on their send back to sender. Return to sender. Verse 10. But has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you keep by the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. We have a holy calling for his purpose which is fulfilled by serving him, not us. Amen? Second Kings 17. Oh, happy days. It's good to hear the pages turning on a Sunday morning. In verse 34. 
2 Kings 17, verse 34. He's talking about the, his chosen children, <laughs> his called children, who were rebellious. In verse 34, what does it say? To this day, they continue practicing the former rituals. They do not fear the Lord, nor do they follow their statutes or their ordinances or the law and commandment which the Lord had commanded the children of Jacob whom he named Israel, with whom the Lord had made a covenant and charged them, saying, You shall not fear other gods, nor bow down to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. But the Lord who brought you up from the land of Egypt with great power and an outstretched arm, him you shall fear, him you shall worship, and to him you shall offer sacrifice. Now you and I offer the sacrifice of praise. And the statutes, the ordinances, the law, and the commandment which he wrote for you, you shall be careful to observe forever. You shall not fear other gods. And the covenant that I have made with you, you shall not forget, nor shall you fear other gods. But the Lord your God, you shall fear, and he will deliver you from the hand of your enemies. However, they did not what? They did not obey, but they followed their formal rituals. So these nations feared the Lord. Now, this is powerful. Grab hold of this. They said they feared the Lord, yet served their carved images. Also, their children and their children's children have continued doing as their fathers did even to this day. They feared the Lord but served the demonic influence of lawlessness. Fearing the Lord here, um, it's like worshiping music instead of the Lord. So they kept a ritual that pleases God, amen, but they didn't serve the Lord. They served their demonic forces of influence. They served lawlessness. They served wickedness. It's like, Many Christians, they pay tithes, they come to service, they call themselves Christians, but then they promote and vote for things that God hates. So they're really not serving the Lord, but they love to go out and tell everybody they serve the Lord. Oh, I serve the Lord, I tithe, I go to church, yes, I tell everybody about Jesus, and I go home and smoke dope. I go home, watch pornography, I go home and do this, and I go home and do that, and Whatever, or do the, you know, these are individuals that do not serve the Lord. They serve the ritual. Amen? So they have a form of godliness but deny the power, don't they? Is everybody okay? Again, I, I, I want to share this because we're going to see more of this. You're going to see a lot more. A lot of this is going to come up. God isn't going to, listen, if he's cleaning up the atmosphere, nothing's getting away with it. Nothing. Light is penetrating every area of darkness right now. Amen? Praise God. Uh, again, uh, honoring the gifts and blessings of God, but serving emotional, lustful desires of self. Heck, you can go out and prophesy all you want. You can lay hands on the sick and still not serve the Lord. Amen? Amen? You can sing, dance, scream, and do whatever you want and still not serve the Lord. Matthew 7. Serving the Lord is out of the heart. Matthew 7. Called to what? Serve. Called to serve. Many people have stipulations with God before they serve. Lord, if you do this, then I'll, you know. Don't work that way. 
We're to be ready in season and out. Is everybody there? Verse 21. Let's speak it. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. That's very simple. This is where we examine, am I doing God's will or am I doing my will? Who am I serving? Am I serving drugs, alcohol? Am I serving tobacco? Am I serving pornography? Am I serving lust? Am I serving this? Am I, ser am I, am I serving the things that are righteous before God? Or not righteous before God? Is my foundation laid on money? Or is my foundation on the anointing? Amen? That's where we must examine ourselves. He says, not many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. He said, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And, the, and I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice what? lawlessness. Now, why would he say that? Because they were honoring the gifts. Amen? They were honoring the gifts, but dishonoring the giver of the gifts. Lawlessness. No guideline of service to the king. Only self-living, self-service living off of the contaminated foundations. So they were using the things of God to finance themselves. I have seen that. I have seen individuals. I'm not mentioning any names, but I've seen individuals that became wealthy by using the gifts of the Spirit. But they weren't really serving God. They believed that they were, but they weren't. Especially when they ask for money for the gift. That is demonic. It's a familiar spirit. <clears throat> James 4. Those are what they call hirelings. Hallelujah. Called to serve. James 4 and verse 1. Is everybody there? It says, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have... You murder and covenant cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. And when you ask, you don't ask correctly <laughs> because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your, your lustful pleasures. Then he calls them adulterers, adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. I don't think anybody wants to be an enemy of God in here. If you do, you're pretty stupid. Verse 5, or do you think that the Scripture says in vain, the Spirit who dwells in us yearns jealously, but he gives more grace, more of God's plan. Therefore, he says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hearts, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded, or cleanse your hands. Lament and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he will what? Lift you up. Very powerful. Wars and fights against emotional, lustful, sinful desires that are lawless deeds. Amen. They're generated from self-serving foundations. I'm going to say that again. They're generated from a self-serving foundation. They're referencing the Lord but not serving Him. Not able to let go of the worldly desires. They try to pretend 
but you can only fake it so long. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, verse 15. Called to serve. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us for after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my what? My laws, in other words, my ways, into their hearts and into their minds. I will write it down. Then he adds, their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. Of course, that comes through repentance. Now, where there's remission of sin, there's no longer enough offering for sin. Therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus and by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast. Everyone say hold fast. Is that associated with being consistent? Yeah. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who promises faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and do so much more, the more as you see the day approaching. In other words, putting his ways in our heart and our minds by the Holy Spirit. So we are really our without excuse. It's just a choice that we make. Amen? We are without excuse. Now we're to still, because we're to hold fast the position to choose to serve. I mean, that's just about it. If you're not living to serve, then go home. I mean, that's the way I look at it. If you're not living to serve, tell the Lord, take me home. What's the sense? Because you're no good here. Amen? And I believe God has taken many people home. Because they've fallen into that place, no longer serve. And he knows what the end result is. Amen? He doesn't want to lose them. So, take them home. Is everybody okay? <laughs> First Timothy 1. I've also seen people get taken home who want to serve but not willing to go through the training. Yeah, I want to serve, but I want to do it my way. Come on, let's do it now. I'm not anxious. I'm just in a hurry. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to serve, serve, serve. What can I do? Die. Hallelujah. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. Is everybody there? That's good. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, let's speak it. As I urge you, when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus, that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to fables, and endless geologies, which cause disputes rather than godly edification, which is in faith. Now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith, from which some having strayed have turned aside to idle talk, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. But we know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for righteous person, but for lawless and insubordinate, for the ungodly and for the sinners, for the unholy and profane, for the murders of fathers, murders of mothers, or manslayers, 
for fornicators, for sodomites, for kidnappers, for liars, for perjurers, and if there's any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. And I thank Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has enabled me because we count, he counted me faithful, putting me into ministry. He counted him what? Faithful. That means he was willing to go through the training. He was in the call, so he got what? Chosen. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Wow. Now, uh, however, for this reason I obtain mercy that in me, first Jesus Christ, might show all long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for everlasting life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible to God, who alone is wise, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. The law in our hearts, in our minds, amen, keeps us in relationship to serve Avoiding lawless deeds of ungodly desires. So the Holy Spirit is always able to convict. If you're in that relationship, if you're connected. If you're not connected, there won't be that conviction. There'll be a justification. Philippians chapter 2. Is everybody all right? Philippians chapter 2. Called to what? Serve it. Jesus came to serve. Amen? That I do like when he exposes. When he calls them hypocrites. That's a very gentle name. <laughs> you hypocrite. <clears throat> Philippians 2 verse 1. Let's speak it together. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being what? Like-minded. Having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambitions or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in a form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking a form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. He came as a what? Bondservant. Hmm. And being found in what? Appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even to the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. Hallelujah. Being, or being obedient, he wants us to become like-minded like Christ, with Christ. And not only to, you know, when it says looking out for each other, it means that we serve each other. Amen? We serve each other. We are called to serve. Uh, now, not slave. Serve. Does everybody get it? I mean, we're not to be abused. Amen? And we're not to abuse anyone or take advantage of anything. There's a difference. We are not in bondage. We are in freedom. We serve because we love. 
We serve because we want to express Christ's character, but Christ's character can't be released and expressed if there's not a relationship in his character. Amen? Psalm 102 and then one other scripture. Psalm 102. In verse 18. Hallelujah. You know, if you've ever started a job, an uh, unskilled job, they first have you doing things that you don't like sometimes. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, so it's like, man, you know, why do I have to clean the bathroom? <laughs> I'm going to be a jet mechanic, you know. <laughs> but, you know, uh, in it, if your heart is really connected with the Lord, it doesn't matter what you do. God is the one that will promote you, not man. When man promotes you, most of the time it's out of season, out of time. And it causes a stumbling block to somebody. But when God promotes you, everything falls into place. Amen? <laughs> Psalm 102, verse 18. Let's speak it. This will be written for the generation to come. That's us. That a people yet to be created may praise the Lord. That's us. For he looked down from the height of his sanctuary, from heaven the Lord viewed the earth, to hear the groaning of the prisoner, to release those appointed to death, and to declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. When the peoples are gathered together in the kingdoms to serve the Lord. To do what? Serve the Lord. In Isaiah 61, we'll close here. Doesn't it say serve him with all of your heart? All your might? Yeah. Psalms, or Isaiah 61, I'm sorry. Isaiah 61, verse 1. Come on, we're going to confess this one. Confession brings possession. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to who? The poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, oil of joy for mourning, and a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And they shall rebuild the old ruins, and they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the foreigners shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. Instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double Everlasting joy shall be theirs, for it is spoken, because it has been written, and it is decreed. Verse 9, for I, the Lord, love justice and hate robbery for burnt offering. I will direct their work in truth, and I'll make with them an everlasting covenant. Their descendants shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge them that they are the prosperity 
whom the Lord has what? Blessed. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and grateful. We are called to serve you, not us. So, Lord, as you bring us through the training of our call, grant us mercy and grace <laughs> that we may follow you all the way home and be an expression of who you are in exchange of our life for yours. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen.